I will call this meeting to order. It is the meeting of the Board of Directors of Ong Point Region Conservation Authority held the uh, November 3rd, 2021. And uh, welcome everyone. And uh, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel at a later date. Before I get into uh, the rest of the agenda, I'm going to express the board's condolences to Mr. Peter Yetma, our board member, who lost his father this past uh, week or two. And uh, Peter, you had indicated to me that you wanted something to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't doubt that many of you knew my dad at all. He um, was a fairly quiet man who led his life and uh, led other people by example rather than by a lot of words. Um, he was 84 years old when he passed. Uh, he passed, it'll be two weeks ago this coming Saturday. And um, three weeks prior to his uh, passing, he was still driving tractor, helping out my brother with the harvest. So um, a lifetime farmer, uh, very much uh, committed to his farm. And um, he, uh, he got to do what he wanted to do up until the very end almost. So that was great. Um, Dad was committed to three things in his life, uh, his, his faith and his family and his farm. And um, I know that mom questioned once or twice whether she was number two or three on that list, but uh, there was always, uh, always things to be done on the farm. Uh, he was passionate about growing things and whether that was the, the flower boxes on his deck that always seemed to be on steroids or his potatoes in his garden that mom was sick about hearing about this summer. He talked about them so much. And um, or the thousands of acres that he planted of corn and soybeans and winter wheat over his farming career. Um, so this past week, I got a card from the rest of the board and staff at the LPRCA indicating that they had made a donation in uh, dad's memory to the Memorial Forest. And I can't think of a more fitting uh, commemoration of a life well lived than especially for somebody so passionate about growing things than uh, to have a, a tree planted in his memory. And so um, on behalf of my mom and the rest of my family, I want to thank you all very much for the very thoughtful uh, consideration to our family, and we very much look forward to attending the, uh, the commemoration service next September. Thank you, Peter. Certainly when I read that obituary, he sounded like a very busy man right up till the end, and I, I'm sure that uh, you and your family are going to miss him. Thank you. So we will move on. Are there any additional agenda items to be added to today's agenda? Let's see any. Moving on, any de declaration of conflict of interest? None noted, Madam Clerk. We'll go to uh, minutes of the previous meeting. This is pages one through to uh, six. The Board of Directors meeting of October the 6th, 2021. Any discussion to be had with respect to those minutes? If not, I do have a uh, motion here that the minutes of the LPRCA Board of Directors meeting held October 6, 2021 be adopted as circulated. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by, moved by Stuart, seconded by Dave. Any discussion? Those in favor? That's carried, thank you. So you probably recall from the last meeting, uh, things have changed here. The clerk has streamlined things whereby you do not have to sign the motion anymore, but I do have to fill the paperwork in ahead of time. So that's why it takes me a little time to, to write the names down. And now we'll move on to uh, Business arising from these minutes, there is none. Review of committee minutes, none. And uh, down to correspondence, item number seven on the agenda. There are uh, five items there of correspondence that have been put in the package. Does anybody have any questions with respect to any of those items or anything that they would like to highlight? Oh, sorry, Peter, see your hand. Go ahead, Peter. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just thought it was very encouraging that the, the province did seem to take to heart some of the uh, recommendations, uh, read the changes to the Conservation Act, uh, particularly our opposition to the uh, uh, Community Advisory Board. So I thought that was very encouraging. Yes, they. Uh, there was a lot of discussion right across the province with respect to that one. And uh, I agree with you that it was uh, wise to take that out. Uh, would have been certainly uh, somewhat of a duplication. Are there any uh, more questions or comments with respect to those uh, items of communication or correspondence? Don't see any, so I will read the motion that the correspondence outline in the board of directors agenda of November 3rd, 2021 be received as information. The mover is? I'll move it. John Shulton, seconded by Valerie. Those in favor? That is carried, thank you. Development applications. We have Leanne Mothy with us virtually, and she's going to give this report with respect to staff approved applications. I believe there are 12 listed between pages 15 to 19. Leanne? Yes, that's correct. Um, LKRCA staff um, has approved 12 applications for development since the October Board of Directors meeting. The report summarizes the location and the nature of each development application. And on the following page is a map of our watershed showing exactly where each of the approvals have been granted. This report has been provided for your information. And if the members have any questions, I can answer them for you. Any questions to Leanne with respect to these 12 applications? Don't see any hands up. Okay. So the motion reads that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the staff approved Section 28 regulation applications report dated the 21st of October, 2021 as information. A mover would be Ian and Peter. Those in favor, that is carried, thank you. We'll now move to the general manager's report. Call on Judy Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So in the GM report, um, I highlighted a few things that were going on in the month of October. Um, at the beginning of the month, um, Debbie Thane and myself had a meeting with the Turkey Point Mountain Bike Club um, we're just looking at uh, various aspects related to the trails in the Anderson track there and the agreement. Um, we'll be bringing forward uh, more information for the board um, on that issue and hoping to have that in December for the board. Um, we did have a very good park season. The parks are closed now. We have started some hydro and water upgrades at the <coughs> Deer Creek location. We're improving seven sites and they'll be turned into premium sites uh, for the camping season next spring. Staff, they've been busy um, and we have been out doing some in the field taking water quality samples. And we also have uh, the forestry staff have been surveying um, some of our forest tracks. I think they've got 14. Uh, completed and we're mapping invasive species and we'll be doing treatment of those um, spe uh, invasive species next year with federal funding that we've secured. So um, that's improving our own property, which is great. So um, that's all I have. Thanks. Are there any questions for Judy with respect to her report? Any hands up? So the motion reads that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the general manager's report for October 2021 as information. Moved by Dave Barris, seconded by Peter. Call the vote. Those in favor? Thank you. That is carried.
We'll now move to the uh, phase one regulations and timelines with respect to the Conservation Authority Act amendments. Pages 22 to 24. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, at the last board meeting, we had just received notice that the regulations had been released in October. So this report just outlines a little more detail and where you can find online the actual regulations. Um, so there was three regulations released related to the Conservation um, Authorities Act. And the one is related to the mandatory programs and services. The second is related to transition plans and agreements for programs um, under um, certain sections of the act. And the third was is rules and, of conduct in conservation areas. So that's related mainly to our, um, all our forest tracks and uh, conservation areas and our campgrounds. So the key feature, one thing that Peter already raised was um, out of the, in the regulations and through the consultation, they did remove the requirement for the um, HCA to establish the community advisory boards. Um, they also did extend the timeline. So all this has to be in place for the 2024 budget. So, things will have to be fleshed out with the municipalities by the summer of uh, 2023. Um, the immediate timeline that we have to deal with is December uh, 31st this year. And that is really, we have to provide a work plan to MECP and it has to express how we intend to move forward uh, with timelines and how we're going to uh, work with the municipalities. And also they wanna know that we reached out to the municipalities uh, before December 31st to start this process. Um, it, they say not a lot of details have to be um, included in that other than a timeline on how we're approaching working with the municipalities. The second deadline is February 28th, uh, 2022. And that's a little more in uh, depth, the information that's required um, for that report. And that um, we have to provide a program and services inventory. And um, on, on the agenda page 23, it lists out um, the items that they're looking to uh, see in there. So that will require more work. And we also have to do some costing of the program. So between <laughs> December 31st and February 28th, is, it will be a busy time, but um, at least we have some timelines and we know um, what we have to do. It's just a matter now getting down and engaging all the municipalities. So that will be coming. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions. But. Are there questions for Judy? any hands up. So the long awaited motion that we've been waiting for for quite some time, this has been worked on for at least two years. And the motion reads that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the Conservation Authorities Act amendments, phase one regulations and timelines report as information. There's the uh, motion is read, a mover and a seconder. Moved by Dave Barris and seconded by Valerie. Those in favor? Those opposed? It's carried, thank you. And the next item is number 9C. It's the exception request for chair and vice chair terms and I'll call on Judy. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, the report is a request for the board to consider a motion. Um, and this is related to the, um, the first change to the legislation in the Conservation Authorities Act that happened in February of this year. 
So we did change our administrative bylaws to reflect the changes that they, they had put forward. Um, and we had interpreted that since we held our annual meeting in January and the legislation came out in February that it wouldn't apply retroactively and that the current uh, chair and vice chair, if they chose, they could let their names stand for one more term because there only can be two, um, a position of chair or vice chair can only be held for two terms, meaning one year and then another year. So um, that was the first point. Um, the other, um, so then what happened was in August, MECP sent out a memo to all the GMs and said, um, when you're considering your exemptions, just uh, remember that um, the legislation does apply retroactively and you must consider the terms prior to the legislation. Um, so some CAs are challenging that and they've got legal opinions and Credit Valley did share their legal opinion they received. And in the, their, from their lawyer, um, it says that there's no, there's pro, in their opinion, there's no way that it can apply retroactively because it didn't indicate that um, in how it was written. I guess that's a Coles Note version. So um, then when we started looking at the other issue is that they, um, you also have to ask for exemption to, because they want the chair and vice chair position to rotate. Um, and in this case, if we don't ask for an exemption, um, then that would mean if, in this case, Mike is Norfolk County, if another Norfolk County person wanted to let their name stand for chair, they wouldn't be able to because the position's already been held by Norfolk County. So I think from a business perspective, and we've always had elect, you know, the election and it's run, we've never had an issue um, with the election and it should be a democratic process. Um, so that's why I was putting this forward for the board to consider these exemptions. Um, and you, there's no guarantee that has to be sent into the minister and then they decide if we get the exemption or not. Um, I did follow up with Credit Valley. They haven't heard back if MECP is changing their position about applying it retroactively. Um, so that's one side of it. But the second piece is also, if we don't ask for the exemption, it, does, um, it doesn't allow for um, municipalities with more than one representative to stand back to back. Um, so I think, and we didn't ask for it to, be a permanent change in the bylaws because they are not approving anything that's a permanent change. It's um, any exemption that I know about that's been uh, approved by it for other CAs has only been done um, on a one year basis. So um, this is written for one year. And I would assume we would, if this is something the board agrees with that we would do every year. So um, that's sort of the, the Coles Note version of what's in front of you. So I'll take any questions and see if I can answer them. Questions for Judy with respect to her report. Dave Bears. Thank you. Through the chair to Judy, uh, what you have here is certainly adequate. And I'm sure that most of the 36 CAs have submitted a similar um, uh, letter to the minister. Um, I, I'm just wondering about how much meat is really on the bone here because uh, uh, are you doing anything in this letter that's unique to LPRCA that the other 36 haven't been doing? I mean, we've all experienced the, the COVID issue um, and the, uh, the changes with COVID. <clears throat> and I think we all agree, as will the other 30, 35 conservation authorities, that uh, uh, one year term is, uh, is really not adequate because that's the learning experience time is a one year term. So um, are we just, doing this uniquely as an LPRCA board, or are we trying to change the entire policy? Um, because if we're doing it as a board, we should have something unique that other CAs are not doing. And I don't know what that is, but uh, has that been considered? And that's to Judy. 
Your comments, Judy. Um, I know that some CAs are asking for, and because they've had the they had the current practice before was that their term for chair or vice chair matched the municipal term. So um, if Mike was elected chair at the beginning of, of a new board coming in from a municipal election, then they would stand for four years. It, would, it matches the term of um, that's unique, I think, to some CAs. Um, but everybody has different situations because their makeup on the, um, you know, of the municipalities, um, like Hamilton, they only have representatives from, I think, Hamilton and maybe one other municipality. So right there, it's a pretty limiting factor that they don't get exemptions. So um, I don't really have any other information on that. Does that help you, Dave? It, it does, Mr. Chairman. It's uh, I, I just had to ask the question if there's anything, but and I can't see how any of the others would uh, would be any different than what we are. Um, I'm, I really couldn't think of an example anywhere of what would make a conservation authority unique. But I think Judy touched it there when they said you've got a larger center like Hamilton with only two member municipalities involved in it, and they probably flip back and forth. But uh, no, that's helpful. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. I thought I saw another hand up. So uh, anybody else with a question for Judy? Any hands up there? So the motion reads, oh, John, go ahead. Uh, to uh, Judy, through you, Mike, the, uh, where does this stand for 2022? Like, is this a two year thing where we're, we're asking for exemption for this year and for 2022? No, so the exemption, the ask through you, Mr. Chair, sorry. Um, this exemption would be for it would be if we received it be in place for the election in January of 2022. So beach for just one term. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The uh, the motion reads that the report entitled "Exception Request for Chair and Vice Chair Terms under the Conservation Authorities Act" be received as information and that the Long Point Region Conservation Authority submits a request to the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks for an exception as per 17.1.3 brackets A of the Conservation Authorities Act to the two consecutive one-year term limit for chair and vice chair. And that the Long Point Region Conservation Authority submits a request to the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks for an exception as per 17.1.3b uh, of the Conservation Authorities Act that the LPRCA be exempt from the requirement to rotate the chair and vice chair amongst all participating municipalities. And that the LPRCA Board of Directors endorses the letter of exception to be sent the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks. That's the way it reads. Mover. Is Dave Barris seconded by Thomas Shelley? Tom, do you have any uh, conflict of interest to declare? I think you're muted there, Tom. Okay, he was strong. Yeah. Sorry, Tom, uh, your microphone's muted there. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I do not have any conflicts. I want to apologize for my tardiness. I was having some connection issues. That's okay. We all get those once in a while. <laughs> thank you. So I, I will call the vote. Uh, those in favor of this uh, motion? Anybody opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Third quarter financials. We have Aaron LeDuc with us virtually, and I'll call on Aaron to give the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the third quarter financial report provides a consolidated and departmental budget versus actual comparison for the period up to and including uh, September 30th, uh, 2020. Uh, the third quarter operating revenues totaled 4.1 million with expenditures of 3.25 million. 
Uh, revenues represented 93.2% of the annual budget and expenditures 73.6%. Uh, the surplus year to date is $858,796. Um, revenues are 1.1 million greater than 2020, up 38% year over year. Um, expenditures are up 20.6% or 556,000 for the same period. Uh, the surplus of $858,796 is 576,000 greater than 2020 or up uh, approximately 204% year over year. Uh, overall, the authority is in a favorable position for the period up to September 30th. And management um, uh, anticipates that will remain in a favorable position for fiscal 2021. I think that's all I have for this report. Uh, any questions from the board? Very uh, good report, very positive. Uh, any questions for Aaron with respect to his uh, report? Not see any hands up. The motion reads that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the quarter three financial report, September 30th, 2021 up to and including September 30th, 2021 as information. Any discussion to be had? Any questions? Ian, go ahead. Or are you the mover? I will move. Okay, thank you. Seconded by? I have a question. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. May I ask a question? Go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry, I missed this and I meant to do it. It all happened so fast. Uh, through you to, uh, uh, to Aaron, uh, on the financial implications, is it forestry sales uh, of 352,009 have exceeded the 300,000 budget. Is that due to pricing or is that due to volume? Uh, has there been an increase in the, in the, um, in the lumber uh, that we've received or more volume? The chair to member uh, bears. Um, the tenders did exceed and yes, it was um, partially due to um, increased demand for lumber. Um, however, we did have um, additional sales of, um, I think it was white pine um, that we did some small salvage um, on our properties. So that was the additional sales in excess of the budget. I just didn't know whether more was harvested than expected, but uh, the answer is no. It just it brought a bit, a few extra dollars. It was the, only the plan tenders that we had put in the budget this year. Okay. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Dave. And we all know that the price of uh, lumber was pretty high this past summer. So that probably reflected in the better price that the conservation authority received. So the motion reads that the LPRC board of directors receives the quarter three financial report, September 30th, 2021 for the period up to and including September 30th, 2021 as information. I will call that uh, vote again, those in favor. That is carried, thank you. Pardon me. Robert, Robert Chambers, welcome. Any uh, conflict of interest, Robert? Uh, no, I just uh, just happy to be here. Just got back. We are now moving on to uh, the backhoe loader purchase, and I'll call on Judy for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we. Uh, Put a tender out on bids and tender website and we received the bids that are on the second page of the report um, so there are six bids received and we're recommending going with the lowest price which is a 2020 caterpillar 416 for a price of 111,190 and also we'd like the board to consider approving uh, purchasing the extended warranty uh, for $2,660 $2, um, for the, the equipment. It, they actually had a 2020 model. Um, they sent in two quotes, one for 2020, one for 2021. Um, it is a brand new uh, piece of equipment. So that's what we're recommending. Any questions with respect to this uh, loader purchase to uh, Judy? <laughs> okay. Don't see any hands up there, but 
Okay, that the uh, the motion reads that the LPRCA Board of Directors accepts the tender submitted by Tormont Cat for the purchase of one new 2020 backhoe loader, model Caterpillar 416, four wheel drive for $111,190. And that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the purchase of a four year or 4,000 hour extended powertrain warranty for a cost of $2,660. Moved by Valerie. No. Second. I wanted to ask a question, Mr. Go Chair. Ahead, Valerie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why the extended warranty? Through the chair to you, Judy. Sorry. Um, we feel that it's a good value to purchase it with it new. You never know. Um, that kind of repair could be a costly repair. Um, so we thought we were under the price um, that we have in the budget. So that's why we're asking for to spend the 2000. It's like an insurance policy and we did have the room with it. Go ahead, Valerie, you have another comment? Yeah, just, uh, just add to that. Will that be tracked? that uh, extended warranty to see how useful it is? Yes, it will. Okay, thank you very much. John, go ahead. Yeah, just a comment to you, the chair, to Valerie, um, coming out of the machinery business, uh, <laughs> the four year, 4,000 hour extended powertrain warranty for $2,660 is very cheap. And that is an expensive machine. Mm -hmm. cheap and if something goes wrong parts are very expensive labor is very expensive so that could be uh, exceeded in one repair job did I see another hand up no just a comment it is $40,000 less than what we estimated in the budget so that's good news too so a mover and a seconder I'll move it. John is the mover Seconded by Peter. Hmm. I believe I read that already, didn't I? Madam Clerk? Okay, yeah. call the vote. Those in favor? That is carried, thank you. Moving on to uh, regulations and provincial offenses officer designations. Call on Leanne Mothy to give that report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the end of September um, of this year, three LPRCA staff members recently completed virtual training organized by Conservation Ontario. The course um, is called Level One Provincial Offenses Officer Course Training. Uh, this course aids in the fulfillment of basic requirements for an employee to be designated as a provincial offenses officer in Ontario. Ben Watson, who is the development technician, will be appointed under Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act for the purpose of compliance and enforcement of any regulation made under this section. This currently includes Ontario Regulation 17806, which deals with development, interference, and alterations done with an area prone to flooding and or erosion, contains dynamic beaches or wetlands. In addition, Debbie Thane and Evan Forbes will be appointed under Section 29 of the Conservation Authorities Act for the purpose of compliance and enforcement of any regulation made under this section and the authority to enforce the Trust Pass to Property Act. Section 29 includes lands owned by the Conservation Authority which includes parks and forest tracks. All PRCA staff are seeking the board's approval of these three designations. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Questions for Leanne? Mm -hmm. Do not see any hands up, Leanne. So I will read the motion that the LPRCA board of directors appoints Ben Watson, development technician as an LPRCA regulations officer and provincial offenses officer for the purpose of compliance and enforcement of any regulation made under section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. And that the board appoints Debbie Thane 
forestry supervisor, and Evan Forbes, Holloman Norfolk Park, Holloman Park supervisor, as LPRCA regulations officers and provincial offenses officers for the purpose of compliance and enforcement of any regulation made under section 29 of the Conservation Authorities Act and the Trespass to Property Act. Any uh, more discussion to be had? Don't see any. Moved by the mover. Valerie, seconded by Robert. Call the vote. Those in favor of the recognition motion. That is carried. Thank you. And now we'll have the uh, communications update with Zachary Cox. Zachary? Just swing this around. He's in the room here with us. So uh, got to swing the, go. try to swing the camera around. Found me. There he goes. All right. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is just a, a brief overview of the past few months of our communications efforts and sort of the statistics around our social media presence and our website use. Starting with our website, it continues to serve us very well. Um, you can see there in the chart that I, I included at the beginning of the report that our usage numbers do line up with the past several years of data in terms of how many people are coming through to visit. If you give me one second here, I'm just going to share a file. Share screen. All right, you should all be seeing a PDF window. Could you just let me know if that's the case? Yeah, okay, brilliant. Uh, so this is the report here. Uh, here are the usage stats for the past three years, uh, July through September. Those numbers are uh, very similar to each other. We're getting the same number of visitors through to our site. Um, what is particularly interesting uh, that you see in our Google search history here is that there's a, a very seasonal trend to the number of people who actually come through to our website. Uh, this graph here with the, the squiggly lines, I believe, didn't actually show up on your PDFs that you received initially. It is available on our website if you want to go take a closer look at it, uh, but it is visible here on your screens now. This is just uh, people visiting Google, searching terms that relate to us, so LPRCA, Deer Creek, those sorts of things, and us appearing in the search results. You can see that there is a very noticeable bump throughout the summer as people are looking for camping information, as they're looking for beaches and outdoor activities. As the weather starts to cool down, so do those sorts of Google searches. Uh, in terms of what people are actually looking at on our website, again, the outdoor recreation stuff tends to be near the top. Our homepage is the most visited page, that's where people land, but then they're looking through at our camping page, our conservation area pages, our seasons passes, those sorts of things. As we ease into the fall here, you'll notice that uh, hunting information does tend to creep up as that is the current activity and uh, everyone is looking for information regarding that. In terms of our top search results, what people are looking for that brings them to us, very similar. They're looking for our conservation areas. They're searching for us by name, which is nice to see. Uh, and if they're looking up Deer Creek, if they're looking up any of our, our campgrounds, we are ranking right at the top of the search results, which means that the content on our website is well prepared to be uh, screened by Google and other search results. And we're getting to the people who are actually looking for us, which is always nice to hear. Included in the, the report here is a list of our latest media releases, as well as the latest media coverage that we've received. So you can uh, click through those and take a look if, uh, there are any, if there's anything that you might have missed and you're curious about seeing. Uh, lately, it's just sort of been some watershed condition statements, some flooding notices that we've been putting out, uh, and those have been picked up a little bit in the media, which is always good. And then in terms of ongoing and recently completed communications initiatives, the Drinking Water Source Protection Communication Campaign uh, was, was issued 
It was shared on our social media feeds. I'm not sure if you had the chance to catch it, but the, the Drinking Water Source Protection Group put together a campaign to educate the public on what those source water protection signs mean. Uh, I'm sure you've seen them as you're driving around. They're the white sign with the blue glass of water on it. It says source protection zone. Uh, that is an indication that the surrounding region around that roadway is within one of those source protection zones, but not everyone really knows what that means. So uh, the working group put together a fun little jingle that encourages people to search up online exactly uh, what a source protection zone is, whether it's a wellhead area or uh, just a sensitive region where activities are carefully watched to determine that they're not impacting the water table. Um, so that's a fun little initiative that's been circulating. Another recently completed campaign uh, that we were involved in is, of course, our, our Memorial Forest Dedication Service that was filmed this summer at the tail end of August. The tree planting was done because we weren't able to hold an in-person ceremony due to the gathering limits imposed during the pandemic here. Uh, the video was edited throughout the end of August and premiered on September 19th, the Sunday that it would normally be held in person. Uh, we had uh, a tiny little set of viewers who watched that video as it was live. And since it's been posted, we've had about 100 people uh, or 100 views on that video, which does line up uh, with what we'd expect to see in terms of people actually attending the event. We tend to reach 200 to 300 people in person. And if we assume that it's families watching at home, uh, each of those views is anywhere between five people. And so we're, we're right in range with actually uh, reaching the entire audience of our donors. Uh, there's a list of names here that I'd just like to note uh, that were instrumental in uh, making the Memorial Forest a success. It's, it's a very nice service that we provide to the community, and it does take uh, some significant work to get done. So Phyllis Buchner, Brenda Atkinson, Joe Rohr, Judy Dedrick, David Petz, uh, Joanne Latart, Jillian Hamm, Chloe Kroos, Chris Reinhardt, Debbie Thane, Nicole Sullivan, and Brandon Good. And of course, we had Mike there uh, giving his awesome speech. Uh, it wouldn't be possible to offer this without all their hard work. So thank you very much to all of them for what they've done. Uh, shifting over to donations, our website, uh, as you all know, we activated online donations through uh, the Canada Helps Service earlier this year, and that has been a successful and uh, well-used service uh, since we set that live. 24 donations have been processed online for a total of $1,294.13 uh, towards the Memorial Forest Initiative. And uh, that's a, a sizable total there, and people are definitely finding it a convenient way to uh, donate to the, to the Memorial Forest. So that's very good to see. Uh, also through uh, this report here, there's just some information on our, our social media presence. Of course, we're, we're posting to those social media feeds regularly, trying to share uh, all sorts of information there. And uh, it's interesting to see that the top performing posts on each of the different platforms that we're on is a little bit different, which just goes to show that we have different audiences across the different platforms. Uh, on Instagram, this post was posted uh, on... August 26th, and it's uh, a photo, and there was actually some video there as well of the sunflower maze that was planted at Bacchus this year. That got a lot of traction. It's a, a suitable Instagram post because it's bright, vibrant, some nice photography of the, uh, I mean, not to toot my own horn, I took the, the photo that's there, but it was uh, a blast taking photos of the bright yellow sunflowers. And I encourage everyone to take a visit when it's growing again next year. Uh, on Facebook, our top post was a thank you for a wonderful season. There's just some photos from throughout the year uh, as we wrapped our camping season. Um, you can see there that I said 198 days to go until it starts up again. The countdown is on. Everyone's looking forward to getting back, uh, back out although things are a little chilly right now. And then last but not least, on our Twitter account, the most popular post was, or the most engaged post was a uh, flooding notice. There was a flood watch that was 
September 22nd, and uh, people tend to look to Twitter for those sort of instant news updates, and that is clearly the case here. Other than that, uh, we'll be continuing to post to our social media accounts uh, as we ease into the end of the year here. And uh, there's some exciting initiatives coming up that I'm really looking forward to and uh, hope you keep an eye on our feeds to see what those are. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, Mr. Chair. Can you uh, switch that up? There? Oh, yeah, I will stop sharing if you give me just one second. Everyone's back on the big screen. Okay, Zach, thank you for that good news report. And uh, thank you for keeping the LPRCA out there on social media. Seems like that's what counts today to attract visitors and, and everything else. So appreciate that. Um, questions for Zachary with respect to his report. I do not see any hands up. So the motion that I have before me reads that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the communications update November 2021 report as information. Those in favor, or no, I need a mover to second. Mover is Tom, seconded by Stuart. Those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. So we are coming to the close of our meeting here. I just want to remind everybody that uh, Wednesday, November 10th will be held in person, the budget meeting. So hopefully you've got that noted. And uh, Dana, I believe has, uh, is waiting a reply from everybody with respect to what they would like for their lunch that day. And, uh, So that's, that's pretty well it. We have a long weekend coming up this weekend. You get an extra hour of sleep because the clocks roll back. So that's <laughs> weekend. <laughs> that uh, concludes our meeting. Thank you for your uh, participation and thank you to all the staff for their good reports. <laughs>